so let's uh, start uh, arvind is it okay with you yeah i'm fine you know yeah okay so it's uh, uh, really my pleasure to have uh, mr arvind khanvi so he is uh, one year senior to me uh, from it kharagpur uh, and we stayed in the same hall uh, patel hall of residence okay as we say patel patel ka tempo high hai we always do it <laughs> Okay, so it was really. Uh, I, I'm seeing him actually live, like uh, face to face after 25 years only. Uh, but we are friends on uh, LinkedIn, so we keep in touch that way. Like uh, we get updated what he has been doing, and uh, because of his uh, news, like uh, updates, I came to know about his great work that he has been doing. So after uh, graduating from IIT Kharagpur. uh he worked in software industries and also the management consultancy uh, you know, like accenture and then he thought about uh, after i guess uh, working for 15 years in corporate world he decided to start his own venture so he founded a couple of companies so in april 2012 he founded the moini systems pardon me if uh, i'm pronounce pronunciation is uh, if it is wrong you're right yeah okay um so it has been 10 years so congratulations first of all <laughs> i think uh, it was april uh, 2012 uh, when he founded uh, this uh, company and later on 5 uh, years later he also founded the om server private limited so he is uh, apart from these two companies also he founded the the moini uh, the uh, foundation and uh, he is the Uh, founder trustee and the chief mentor of uh, that uh, foundation and which is doing very a uh, great job in uh, uh, domain of education and uh, as per the information i also came to know that he has also started uh, actually working in healthcare area so it is really a uh, very important basically and uh, being uh, this uh, subject being uh, Called the human geography and societal needs. So here we, uh, the students, are supposed to go to the society and see what the problems are. And based on that, uh, there is the next uh, in semester. The next semester there will be a project that the students have to work on. So I think uh, uh, Arvind's uh, talk will be very important because uh, he will share his experience. Like he has seen a lot of problems in society, and that uh, probably. Uh, motivated him to solve those problems so he has been doing those things that the students are supposed to do right now here as a part of curriculum so i welcome you uh, arvind and uh, yeah so please please go ahead thank you very much for actually agreeing to uh, give a talk here yeah. uh, thank you jitendra uh, let me first make sure that i am audible enough because there's always a fear that i'm speaking and nobody's hearing or somebody is having problem so i hope i am clear enough in terms of uh, <clears throat> so you are able to hear me you can nod me you know if you think you are able to hear me okay so uh, starting with this uh, i think once again thank you jitendra i think for again reconnecting it's been quite a pleasant surprise whenever we connect with the old alumni you know the friends and this has happened in past 4 5 years that i've been able to connect with hundreds of new friends which were actually old friends but now i know them much better than what i used to know in the iit so <clears throat> that was my lost time so <clears throat> trust me i think even you know if we would have passed through jitendra i think i would have not even recognized you you know but i'm happy that you recognize the old times very well <clears throat> i think given that there are many uh, i think the second year third year students in this particular forum uh i just want to make sure that you know we set the tone right in terms of because this is this cannot be about me this has to be about the what you can relate with so the what is what are those important points of journey which probably i went through so there are many details like i can talk for hours a lot of times you know it's usually one on one not like you know in a very formal environment mix of hindi and english so <clears throat> please pardon me if i just get into the group that way but the The, the agenda which I have thought of today is not what you can easily discover 
on maybe you know my linkedin profile or you just go out and search on uh, some of my works kind of name but maybe something which is far closer to me and you know the which has been important in terms of journey because <clears throat> the problems which we are solving if let's say if i see from the social angle the problems which we are working always starts with us because we passionately to relate with things where we are much more connected so uh, just to remain anchored i have created a ppt because i was requested also i'll see if i can just put that aside and you know make sure that i can cover few of the pointers so that you know i don't miss out and then in between i can share the the, the possible uh, anecdotes of my life which has really helped me in terms of identifying the problem or passionately looking at the problem or even you know some of the things unknowingly which has happened but happened for the good uh, <clears throat> so let me try to present uh, so i'm just trying to So, Chitendra, I think uh, I'm audible. Yeah. You know, a presentation is also visible, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Okay. <clears throat> so, usually, like, let me start with a word of caution. So, whenever there is a presentation, I really, really miss out the flow. But still, there is a need, so I'm doing it. Uh, we'll have <clears throat> uh, enough time to kind of talk about it. But presentation will allow me to close few of the things much faster. So, to start with, uh, my name is Arvind Thanvi. I'm with, I'm founder of Moini Foundation and Home Server Private Limited and another company called Moini Systems. Uh, so I started this journey around 10 years back out of my total 25 years of work. Uh, so there was a very interesting transition between how from a corporate world I moved to the social sector. But I think the journey actually starts from my, uh, I would say the older time where, you know, I was in school, but I didn't realize some of the experiences that way. So quickly walking through. <clears throat> Again, a little bit of more emphasis, which I think Jitendra has covered. I graduated from IIT Kharagpur in 1997. I was in a five-year course of an architecture. And <clears throat> after my graduation, I came back to my hometown, uh, Jaipur, and started working for a small, uh, I think, you know, one of the, the most reputed uh, architecture work, you know, organization. But while I was, you know, that was the time when, you know, the computerization started. So while I was doing a lot of 3D and, you know, the, I would say, the, you know, the computerization of that manual drawing all apart, I ended up writing software for one of my senior who actually created a CAD software with so So from my journey from architecture to the software actually quickly moved into the same domain. And after three, four years, you know, because of there was very limited kind of option in life, I was uh, coming from a very humble lower middle class background. So. I had very little choices. The flow was basically taking me away, uh, wherever it wanted to. So I ended up in uh, one of the company, which is completely an IT enabled services and spent around 10 years there. The company's name was Accenture, as Chitendra already mentioned. Uh, after Accenture, I basically, you know, the, I worked for 10 years there. And then in around 2012, I took a corporate retirement. This is what I call my first retirement because it was actually planned as a retirement as, and I worked for two, three years to make sure, you know, I can, I'm prepared for that retirement. I'll talk about, you know, a few of the instance out of that. But then in 2012, I took a retirement with a clear intention that I would not like to work for money anymore because I think whatever I had, it was not too much, but whatever I think, you know, from my lifestyle I had, I realized that I can live rest of my life, even for myself and my family. So the idea was to take the corporate retirement and see what uh, the more value added work I, I can do with my uh, time. Of course, there was some personal agenda also. I wanted to be closer to my parents, closer to friends, closer to an area where I wanted to work. So I came back to Jaipur in 2010, 12, and started primarily Moini Foundation and Moini Systems. I think the idea was <clears throat> that because I was coming from IT background, I said, I'll end up doing something because I can't sit idle and on the name of retirement, but I'll be doing what I was not doing, which means I'll create products, not do services in, in an 
IT enabled services most mostly. I think when you hear the names of Infosys, TCS, Accenture, they're mostly IT enabled services. You get very little time in terms of really developing your own product from a technology. So I thought I'll for five days I'll work on products and one day I'll devote to Moini Foundation where I'll try to help people whoever needed uh, either in schools, college, whichever skills I have, I'll impart it. Uh, but one day in a week, I'll devote it. Uh, incidentally, in the next few months, what happened is the, the five is to one actually reversed in terms of one is to five. I ended up doing five days of kind of, you know, the pro bono work, helping people in terms of uh, learning new skills or trying out things in the, uh, the education space, which nobody was addressing. And then spend one day to write some software with the help of that, I can actually go back and kind of, you know, shape up my idea because eventually I knew that whatever I'm going to do has to be scaled up. So the, the journey actually started with a very clear intention that now I'll work with value creation rather than wealth. And the whole concept was very clear that the value, if you create value, the wealth will automatically follow. And I think to an extent, this has been a true for me as well. Uh, if I look at, you know, my last 10 years journey. Now, uh, before moving to kind of, you know, next step, just want to emphasize on the, the, the core areas, you know, core barriers, which we are trying to break through our work. That is cost, access and language. So when I started, so, so in 2012, when I came back, the very first thing is, if, if you go back and ask somebody that, you know, after 15 years of uh, experience in any of the IT companies, especially playing account director roles or DU lead roles, uh, I think you may not even remember or, you know, get a chance to write a, a, a code there because, uh, you know, your role is very highly managerial and uh, yes, it's, it's mostly managerial. So from a complete managerial role to moving into something where you have to kind of you know, build your own product, uh, I realized the first thing I need to do is I need to learn writing the code. So I think the first one year I spent a, a reasonable time in trying to learn myself uh, you know, how to write code, how to make app and whichever, you know, the nearby, uh, I would say unemployed engineer, I was able to find, I'll just bring him, you know, to my place. And then I'll say, okay, I, I'm also learning. I'll teach you. And in this whole process, I ended up getting many people who got placed into some of the companies because they learned the skills, but some of them actually ended up staying with me and they're still with me. So that's been a boon. Uh, Coming back to this, breaking the barrier of cost access language. I just want to emphasize so that maybe later on I can save time is. See, there were, if, if you look at the, uh, just I'm trying to switch the, the, uh, the, the perspective. I was talking about myself. Let's look at how the, the, the real world is in terms of uh, the learning, especially for the people who are really having a lot of barriers. And three key barriers which I realize that I need to work and break through my initiatives, my technologies, my effort. No. And they were cost, access, and language. Now, if, if I, I'm just trying to help you understand what I mean by these things is cost is something that you can relate it a lot more now that, you know, or maybe earlier also, that there are majority of the people, you know, the learner in India, or even some part of the world also, other world, can do not get a right exposure to quality education because there is a cost involved into it, which they can't pay. And that's why uh, the government education system or government schools exist because it allows, uh, you know, the there's a still substantial amount of, you know, I would say the major uh, <clears throat> number of students, it allows to get an access of uh, free education. So our idea was when we are working for right to quality education, I, maybe I forgot to mention earlier, the whole idea was to focus on right to education uh, you know, the, the take the right to education to the next level, which is right to quality education, because we realize uh, education without quality is basically uh, something which uh, has lesser, you know, in fact, it's more of a damage than actually in education. So focus was on the quality education. I realized that technology can play a big role. And this was the times of 2012-13. Uh, idea was to create something which can reach without the cost barrier. 
So whatever we wanted to create, we, have, we thought we will always create it for free, especially when it is software, it should really reach to free. And the whatever is free should reach to the people. Second was access, which means key for using technology, you need an access. And that's where our first initiative in 2013 started. I'll come to that, you know, in the next few slides. And third was language. The one of the fact which I realized is that English as a language has really gained a lot of prominence. So there's a lot of development happening, a lot of content has been created. And most of the parents who have been able to afford to send their kids into the English medium schools, they have the good paying capacity. So their, uh, you know, the access level is already, you know, the much better. So the whole idea was to work for languages which are non-English. And I think <clears throat> it starts with me because I did my, like, up till 12th class, I was in Hindi medium school. And there was a, a, a kind of huge, a kind of pretty long, prolonged journey of my own struggle of how from Hindi to English I could transition and what are the key uh, factors which actually helped me or which were holding me both ways uh, in this. And I think that's what is the crux of probably my presentation will be because many of us, irrespective of whether you come from Hindi medium schools, English medium schools or local language, I think we sometimes are not able to break the barriers which were created around us either through societal reason or the language uh, you know the, the the first language second language this thing and so so i think you know there are interesting uh, the small small stories around it i hope i'll be able to cover one or two so <clears throat> moving on to and this is where i want to spend least amount of time uh, so I'm just sharing some stats in terms of last 10 years. If I look back, what has been our outreach and impact? So this represents uh, <clears throat> our work where we have been able to uh, <coughs> cover 12 states. Uh, you can see 11 states written, but two weeks back, we have added uh, the one instance in West Bengal also. So hopefully, and we are expanding there. So we have covered in last 10 years, 12 states. And uh, I think you can look at it. More than 2000 schools have been covered since then. Uh, we have pretty much worked with more than 8 lakh students as a beneficiary. Uh, during community learning, uh, you know, during COVID time, we also set up uh, 11 community learning centers, which actually really work pretty well in their communities. Uh, there's a very interesting video which was uh, created by one of our CSR partner. I would like to share it towards the end of it. So I think these are numbers which gives us little little bit of kind of you know gratification. Okay, there are reasonable numbers to talk about it. And the, the best part is I never thought I'll be doing something like this when I started ten years back. The whole idea was to just focus on one problem statement which I felt is relevant and can be replicable in terms of, because there are a lot more people and things automatically became business case, things automatically became uh, kind of you know, expandable. And if I look at the overall ecosystem, what needs to be done, I think we have hardly done anything. So we have just started. This is, these numbers are just small testimonials so that other people can trust us and allow us to do a lot more. <clears throat> so let me just also give you throw you a few keywords and probably, you know, when, if any of you guys get interested in knowing little more about <clears throat> what we do, what I've done, uh, probably you'll find these keywords helpful in terms of searching, because that's something you can find a lot on the internet also. So <clears throat> when we started working in any of the social contexts, I'm still not talking about the first use case. Probably I'll do that, uh, you know, uh, when we are um, into the next phase. But when we started uh, this thing, what we realized that, so, okay, let me start with my first uh, <clears throat> use case, which I could discover. So this was 2013. Um, I, so in 2012, I started working with many of the colleges in Jaipur. And the whole idea was ki whatever I was learning. So I started with Java and then, you know, some of the web technologies, those kind of stacks, which were relevant to that time. So <clears throat> when I was doing it, I thought maybe it's best that, you know, the best way to learn is to teach them. So I was reaching out to them and I said, okay, I'll teach kids. And because I had one or two kind of helping hands, I thought I'll do it very cost effectively. Let's say somewhere around 
500 rupees per person. So, and within 15 days, we'll complete something. Like that. It started, the people talked, you know, the most of the management were very enthusiastic. But unfortunately, over the period, we realized that there's, there's a, it, it's not a very clear system. And then they were malicious. You know, the people, people started saying, you know, we cannot do it for 500 rupees. You'll have to charge minimum 7,000 rupees. Give us some cut and all those things. So within a one year, we actually stopped because that was not a whole idea to make a business case out of it. The idea was to help people. The first year we spent in that, I learned this thing. I was still looking for some scenarios. Then second year, we realized there were a lot of computers and tablets were getting distributed. I don't know whether any of you remember that particular phase or not, but uh, this was, I think most of you must be in school that time. With a lot of uh, 10th class and 12th class students, the, the governments were enticing by Akash tablet or some other tablets, free tablets in the States and free computers to studio student. And one of the district collector, again, uh, reached out to me. I'm sure Jitendra might be knowing that his name is PC Kishan. Uh, I met him here and I realized that he and I were pretty much same time existing in the, you know, KGP, IIT Kharagpur, but never met each other. So he said, Arvin, you know, the government is actually distributing these laptops and tablets, but there is no software to use in it. So I said, okay, let's do one thing. And we did one, one week exercise to curate some content. And there was one tool I was creating also, which became a proper, uh, you know, the LMS system in later. So we compiled that particular thing into uh, a, a piece of kind of, you know, the content and software and navigational software and put it into those computers. So this is where we started with, but then again, they were, you know, the very interesting road, uh, road, I would say roadblocks or hiccups. And there was first learning I got to know, uh, when working with the government. So, so, so I'm just emphasizing on, on this statement, uh, that in government, one of the biggest challenges to sell something which is free because something which has value much more easily gets through for n number of reasons. But this is first realization we got to know that something which is free, pushing that is very, very difficult because people don't see the value in it. So we got a roadblock with this. But again, I ended up meeting another collector, which is collector in Udaipur. And then we said, okay, let's do a 12 school pilot where in these tablets, we will put these software and then we will give it. And this is where our first initiative started. Uh, we went there, we created software and, you know, we worked with their teachers to create content and bundled, bundled into a tablet. Now, when we were giving these tablets and we were interacting with the education department and school uh, teachers and all, this is where we found our first use case. And we realized that there are hundreds and hundreds, in fact, I'll say thousands and thousands of schools where government had already given ICT labs, which is computer labs. And they were all you know, the kind of, you know, getting wasted because it was not reaching in the hands of students. And the first pain area, which we picked up is we will have to make sure that some of these labs revive and they reaches in the hands of students and whatever is kind of, you know, the breakage in between, which means key, a software or content or monitoring, we will actually create it. And that's what's the first piece of technology we created, you know, in a, in a proper, uh, smart class system that is quiz Academy. Uh, it's, it's, you know, the openly available as quizacademy.org, where we have been hosting uh, the curriculum map quizzes for uh, various ports. So we started somewhere January 2014, we started with this uh, project. We named this project as a project of Tarsh, and there was 12 school pilot. And one of the most interesting thing which happened is the very first day when uh, our, our kind of, you know, the team member went on the ground. He called me and said, sir, project khatam ho gaya. And I said, why? He said, there's no lab here. And that's where I think the, the real thing triggered off because I used another learning, which one of my friend, I mentioned Mr. P. Shikisan shared me. He told me in a, in a different context, ki, Arvind, sarkar mein chalta hai. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, these guys also, I think use this particular, uh, uh, the crux very smartly, especially when you work with either government or any formal environment, that there is a value of paper. But the paper has to be very, very, you know, the I would say the systematic. So, so he told me the sarkar mein kaga chalta and whatever is on paper is proof. And if it is not on paper, then it doesn't make any sense. 
so i use that whole interpretation he wanted me to have the proper mou and everything whenever i do with the work uh, with any uh, collector but <clears throat> when you know i use this particular thing in this scenario that if the government education department has given me 12 schools we are saying that they have the best of the labs i would believe that they have the best of the lab i have given a program i have given a software my job is to monitor on behalf of collector and i'll keep doing it and one other thing which we did and which really worked and i'm emphasizing on this particular instance is i actually started reporting the data of those schools because which was not coming it was coming as a zero so i reported zero data for two months created a pressure a bubble which finally blasted with the collectors you know pressure and within 15 days every principal was able to revive their lab the whole idea was somehow they should revive it give it in the hands of student if student use automatically the information comes to us and <clears throat> that that was first thing after this six months this was a very kind of you know successful pilot in one of the tribal area school cm of rajasthan visited and when she saw the whole thing how you know the kids were actually uh, or you know, you know so basically the whole idea was he how, how kids were can you kind of you know using these computers using these uh, systems which have given they were showing their kind of report card and thing so it was pretty zapping for her and i think because of harkush we were able to kind of quickly ramp up from 12 to kind of you know 1000 plus schools in 3 to 4 years so i think that was first instance uh, which uh, i thought i'll just emphasize because this will come back again and you know uh, here and there but let me kind of you know quickly uh, come back to this particular slide uh, why i wanted to have at least one instance of mine used is that a lot of time we think that by creating technology the change will come but i think it's not the best of the technology it's basically the best of the adoption which is what needs to be used so what we were able to work and we have been able to successfully kind of achieve this is that we were able to engage with government in a very meaningful way by making the, them accountable so that's where we realized the right partnership is important so partnership with the collector actually worked well for us we actually realize that you know by pushing things to the teachers or principal does not work you have to work collaboratively we have to understand their problem and then slowly slowly help them adopt you know the the, the new processes without kind of disrupting what they do and this is what i would you know start saying you know this innovation for change usually requires just 10% of the technology and 90% of the social engineering and you know you doing this we started with our flagship program so what are the flagship program we created number of programs which we felt this is how the the intervention should happen so the project utkarsh is one of the program which allows us to do a, a complete smart class implementation in government schools we have three different models then we realized another problem statement which is around internet uh, that you know there's a lot of good things happening on internet and a lot of our work is not reaching to the people because of the the non availability of internet and that's where we came up with our the offline content server kind of uh, technology which uh, uh, one of the flagship program e gyan kendra it started with where we used to enable communities with a lot of uh, open source content and make a local wifi and make sure that everybody in the village is able to use it uh, these two programs were both nominated in 2017 and 18 for pm innovation award uh, <coughs> using Uh, you know then we have two more kind of you know flagship program the industry alignment program started with the very first thing that i wanted to make sure people who are coming out of college are getting aligned to the more industry so we do a lot of activities in that and the model village is something which we have started doing this year you know less than a year back when uh, schools were kind of you know locked down and we got a posty to work to work in the communities so that's where this program came in some of the technologies which we were able to kind of you know create in this process work quiz academy which is an online and offline basically in hybrid uh, complete smart class system which we have been running in the local languages uh, school in a box is one of the customized version of our offline content server uh, i've shared towards then i'm sharing a video of it so hopefully any of you can see that you can find it mini tinkering kit and robotic kit is my response to the uh, atal tinkering lab where when i was reviewing one of the lab on behalf of niti ayog i realized that the one of the reason why it's not reaching in the hands of student 
is because it was too costly so it was more like a museum so and and you know if if you make things too costly the teachers and principals will be very you know the uh, you know risk averse in terms of giving it's a, uh, it in the hands of student it's same as what we have seen in the ict labs that you know the new labs nobody will actually give in the hands of student because they'll be scared that okay they will matlab kharab kar denge tod denge hai na and then in 6 months you keep it locked and automatically a hardware just get dusted out so this is been a classic problem where you provide a solution which is too sophisticated and it doesn't work and we ended up creating so when i was reviewing you know the one flash the thought flashed that what they are not able to achieve in maybe 20 lakh rupees i'll do it in 10000 rupees and i got an apostrophe within a month's time and for now last 3 months we have been doing tinkering and robotics through a mini uh, kind of you know the kit which we created at our own kind of disposal and uh, the hundreds of <coughs> schools are now actually leveraging and communities are leveraging this uh, enhancing languages through stories another interesting thing which we started last year where we help students basically the, the, the young students uh, creates their own stories rather than listening the stories because we found listening the story has its cap but the creating story basically impacts a child in terms of it removes his hesitation it improves his comprehension creativity a uh, a uh, uh, oration narration vocal so there are many aspects of you know his personal development which happens in the uh, this thing so enhancing languages through stories something which uh, is very interesting and we created a very small uh, deck which we have been uh, you know happily distributing and i was very happy to see somebody i think two days back sent me photographs from one of the ladakh school where he been trying this story making kind of you know through the story prompt so i know many of things might not make sense uh, as i'm just skipping through and it's a too little time but then uh, let's see if i can cover few uh, you know the uh, of of my kind of crux of the journey uh, and i think that's that will like basically you know define uh, what was my motivation to get into it so let me start with uh, one of the incidents in school so i'm just trying to keep a rain check okay so we have another 10 minutes i'll try to see if i can finish it in 10 to 15 minutes and then we can talk uh so i think my journey you know the kind of interesting anecdotes started in in school when i was in 12th class uh, on a government scholarship in udaipur a school called vidya bhavan and i was actually you know the it, it was an era when there was no internet so somewhere around 1989 or 90 uh my father sent me a, a clip in the in the letter and it was a paper clip i showed it to one of my friend who suppose who was supposed to be who was my class topper school topper and he looked at it and he told me this ki arvin i know about this so i said what is this bola this is iit's exam हमारे जैसे लोग नहीं देते हैं ये तो बिरले लोग ही देते हैं एंड बिलीविंग दिस गाय आई नेवर इवन अप्लाइड फॉर इट आई नेवर इवन फिल्ड द फॉर्म फॉर आई आई टी सो दैट वॉज आई थिंक यू नो द वेन आई लुक बैक इन दिस दैट हाउ इजीली आई बिलीव यू नो द अदर पीपल दैट यू नो एंड दिस इज समथिंग लॉर्ड ऑफ यू कैन रिलेट दैट मेनी ऑफ योर डिसीजन वेन इट वॉज ड्रिवन बाई समबडी एल्स इज परसेप्शन दैट यू कैन डू इट और यू शुड नॉट डू इट और दिस इज नॉट फॉर यू और like you know the, the the major i think the issue was the language part he the, the most of the people you know uh, the when you are in a, in a more vernacular this thing the exposure is little less so there is a lot of belief that you know you are not fit for this or this is for not for you somebody who's too intelligent you without realizing that you also could be part of that particular intelligent this thing and i think what happened is i did not apply for this i went for a local Uh, the rajasthan level pet which is a engineering college you know with one year gap i ended up in one of the good college and during that college when i reached and i met some of my seniors i realized that maybe you know maybe i can be little better than what seniors i'm looking at so it's like you know somewhere in the heart you feeling ki i can be little well i should if this is what i will be in four years then maybe you know i need to change something and luckily i was bringing a form 
from Jaipur to one of my college place, which is Jodhpur. For a friend's relative, he did not fill it and I ended up filling it up. Three of my hostel mates helped me with the subjects, which I was not good. I was only good, decent at physics. And I ended up cracking IIT you know, with whatever in the 2000 something rank and being in IIT Kharagpur at that time. So that, the, and, and also when I reached there, I realized one of the thing was that the many of the people I was seeing, because I was an average student in my class. And when I looked at people there, and then I was like, first thing I was thinking is why most of my class toppers cannot be here. They never thought beyond a typical BSc or, you know, uh, the engineering. That's why they are not able to. So I think the first emphasis was, I think, limiting ourselves by somebody else's belief is something which hurts a lot. And my take is, because you guys are more privileged, use this instance. I'm sure you will have your own instances, but help other people to dream big. That's what we are trying to do. So a lot of time, people think what we are doing in uh, schools with the kids is we are trying to help their maths or science or something. Actually, no. The academic learning is not at all my priority. My priority has always been the, you know, the soft skills, the skills like confidence, skills like participation, engagement. It's something which basically grows on their own with experience. And I'll just maybe in the next uh, point, I'll try to cover that. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe, you know, with this, I'll try to summarize things further because of the time. Uh, so this happened, you know, and after that, because it was still, I was a Hindi medium student. I was still thinking in Hindi. Whenever there was a tough subject, I will end up finding a book in Hindi, like economics was there in the second year. And I had to find a Hindi book to understand economics as a subject and then do a little bit of literal translations or keywords so that I can pass. So this was going on. I ended up completing my graduation. Uh, ended up in the in next few years in a company called Accenture. And this is where I met my worst fear. And the fear was uh, I was managing a team of seven people. And one of my DU lead, DU lead is someone who manages n number of projects like mine uh, for one customer. So in one of the meet, he actually asked me to go on stage and talk a little bit about the work which we do. I thought I'll do it, you know, I never uh, doubted myself. But I went there in front of everyone, I actually got blanked and you know, it was like I choked, I couldn't speak anything. I actually stepped out, even though I had some notes written on my hand also. My due lead also came, the manager, he said, okay, is this your first time on the stage? I said, maybe I don't even remember what was the last time. So this was the biggest fear was hit that, you know, I can't even stand up in front of other people and speak and uh, forget about the, the, the fact that during that time, asking somebody that what is your name also required courage for me because it had asking your, you know, what is your name, which is four words. And trust me, this has happened. And that was the time where I have to decide whether to focus and shape my career in terms of one man person, like, you know, who sits in the corner is good at his technicalities and design well and everything, but maybe in people skills, which is managing people, driving people, uh, connecting with people, building relationship is not something which is piece of my cake. But then that was the, you know, the very interesting thing that, you know, I decided, no, I should not be just limiting myself. Maybe I should do something, but I didn't know what to do. And just during that time I had, my first, uh, it was my second, but I think in a very important kind of, you know, the travel I had to do in US for a project. And the very first time when I went to the US and the first day when I met with the team, I, it really was a hard hitting for me. You know, I just, just bolta na, apna sar liya I bolta, ye kya ho hai? means that everybody there, bolta, we were so hung up, ki aapke English achhi honi chi, aapke English achhi honi chi. And, but everybody who was in the team, there was nobody who was good at English. Everybody was like, they had their own accent. Somebody was coming from Russia. Somebody was coming from Spain. Somebody was from, there were two people from UK, London and Glasgow. And even their accent was completely different. At very first day we had, we were able to make very little out of each other. But after two days we were able to understand. And I think this is where I realized that it's basically the fear of, you know, the speaking wrong in, you know, actually holds us back. So that particular experience that, you know, that nobody in the world really cares about how good you are in English. But the most important thing was 
that how good you are in your work so i realized that i was actually exceptional in what i was doing and i was able to rise up very quickly um in that particular hierarchy also with the people also but then starting that point when i left my fear i started you know asking people if i didn't know anything you know even the simple spelling or simple words or something uh, you know i was when i was speaking i was taking a feedback whether i'm able to speak well or not so after few months my you know because of this i was able to come out of the fear that i can speak english or i cannot speak english and i think that was the most important thing which i wanted to pass on that it's mostly our fear of you know ki hum galti na kar dein isliye we are basically we hold back and lot of time we don't grow in that and i see world full of it you know uh, <clears throat> coming back to i think you know this thing uh, it didn't happen you know it's very hard so, you know it's saying is easy that okay you change yourself you work on this you know there are a lot of self help books but it doesn't happen that way we have to basically make sure that we are experimenting with ourselves and that is what i think was one of the best thing which happened with me that i decided to experiment it took me 2 years but in 2 years i was able to transform myself in terms of completely someone who is out of fear i was still learning the language i'm still learning the language when i write i'm still dependent on uh, i would say the spell check and all but then this one instance which i would really love to share uh, which is very important and i would say most of us actually go through so this was when i was trying to overcome my fear uh, two things i did one is every soft skill which was happening in my organization i did it twice because first time it's just you get a feel good but second time you actually get deeper so it's a very interesting thing that you try to do same thing twice don't believe that in same training can help you in this thing but the most important thing and something which remains with me was uh, a fear where you are in an audience let's say like you are in an audience and i'm speaking and you have a questions so i usually have usually have to have questions but i was always scared of asking questions so it was like my question was in my throat and you know my heart was doing dhak dhak and i was not able to ask so what i dared with myself is that if i am sitting in any of the forum listening somebody and if i am able to relate with the speaker a bit i will make sure that i am going to ask the first question no matter how silly that question is even if i don't get a right question and i started doing that and that was something which really changed me because i actually ended up doing that in one of the forum where the the few speakers one of the speaker was the the head of i think the whole organization who came from us and i ended up asking a question uh, the first question and even after few months people will meet me and they will remember okay i know you are you're the one who asked the first question so i think it, that that fear of asking question goes away the moment you ask the question so my take is if do those two three points i have many more things but then i'll try to now summarize and stop at some point uh is uh, the, you know take you know relate something which happens in your life because that's something which drives you to do the action you get a clue from your you know your your own experiences a uh, lot of time we read many self help books but trust me it's your own experience which really takes you further uh so i'm basically going to share one more incident in a, in a more as a reflecting for for you guys which is i think everybody knows about gandhi ji right and you know in a in a many ways he must have influenced pretty much most of us and there's a very interesting quote uh, now it's very famous but i'm saying what i read in 2005 6 in one of his biography uh, by louis fisher that be the change you wish to see it it's a simple word and i think it it resonates very well you know that if you want to see some change then you have to start with yourself this is what it says now one thing when i was reading that biography i understood and learned us and in, i think this is one challenge i always had that you know i'm not really good at reading the reason especially you know the people who have a, of a, about people who are of, of very high caliber so one example is let's say uh vivekanand so i think you'll see a lot of quotes and a lot of good words around him but i never understood him because i can't relate with him because to me he's a he's a too big a person and too noble a person and i think you know there's a lot of there's a big gap between them us but i can relate with let's say jitendra 
so anything which is a good example or good good thing which has happened in his life or i can relate with my friend who has certain good skills you know something he can speak better than me then i'll basically make him a role model and then i'll say okay uh, you know let me learn from him because i can relate with him so i think a lot of time so this is where this relation started when i was looking reading that and there were two part of gandhi ji i think pretty much everyone knows one you know who has been known as a mahatma gandhi and i think everybody talks about it great thing about it and i can't relate with him so he's the gandhi i can't relate because he's a mahatma and i think i i see anything which he does versus i can do there's a big gap i don't know the steps in between but then the person i could relate with is the gandhi ji before he became the mahatma i think gandhi ji he was a very average personality a, a, a normal looking person uh, uh i would say uh, pretty much i would say the if, uh, not so successful as a you know the career wise also uh, no, he himself talk about a lot of his weaknesses in terms of uh, his uh, instincts and behavior and those you know the character so i could relate with that because i think that's more real to me and one thing which really struck me that if that kind of person can hear his own voice jaise hum bolte hain na apne atma ki awaaz sunte hain to andar ki inner voice ko sunke if he can become mahatma then i think most of us can really do a lot wonder so my take here is uh, again uh, see what you can relate with and you know because it it just helps you to build that particular journey so you can relate with someone who's your friend who's your professor who's your you know, the brother you know sister and you know or someone you 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 can basically you know take a take a very you know uh, the what what the person is doing you can relate that okay there are ways i can really reach it so many of the skills whether it is speaking skills or writing skills or someone i i started looking up to people whom i can relate and you know there were two three people i could clearly relate one was apj abdul kalam kalam another was lalu yadav the way in confidently he kind of puts his this thing forget about his other kind of aspects of it but then i think that's that's something you know whatever he says whether it is in hindi english he is able to hit it hit it with his audience so there is something unique about it or shashi tharoor because i have heard three of them in person and i could relate it you know there is something unique about their speech and then i should really see if i can learn from them and i have learned a lot now i think i have already talked about value or worth financial freedom is something which is important because i think you should know as part of any journey uh, the, when i was transitioning from corporate to the, the uh, kind of you know the a kind of corporate retired kind of this thing where i wanted to didn't want to worry about it so i am a fan of a book called rich dad poor dad many of you guys might have heard about it because it's pretty famous nowadays and it's good to read make your own interpretation because exactly as it you can't make it but one interesting thing which i realized that you know uh, to become like you know there are two three key saying you know to uh, i think become stinking rich one of the biggest hurdle is your safe and secure job so i really believed in like if you want to really claim your time you need to really reach a financial freedom and for before leaving in 2012 for 2 to 3 years i actually made sure that i was able to uh, you know write off all my loans because i had two homes uh, to make sure they are actually earning for me so that when i am really not working they provide me some sustenance and uh, uh no further loans in terms of uh, trying to upgrade the car or buy a new house and all those things so there have been a systematic 3 4 years of planning before i could actually reach to a point and say okay i'm doing it because i have a family a wife and two kids who are growing their uh, their, their education everything had to be taken care of so uh, i would say i have not played too risky because i had an opportunity to plan things and i did that and i came back and one of the anecdote i wanted to share is like rich dad poor dad book which even i'm now recommending my kids to read uh, just to understand uh, a difference between assets and liability and how you start perceiving you know what is asset what is liability not in terms of the the something which has a money value but also in terms of uh, the, the your own skills which are the big asset uh, i'm pretty much towards the end uh i don't know let's see if i can just walk through a uh, <clears throat> few of this uh, statements i keep using when i'm talking to people or when i'm uh, reflecting into it so one of the first thing which i 
started very confidently saying and whenever i go to the colleges or talk to some of the younger generation people uh, this is what i think i would say ki galti karna hamara janm se adhikar hai i think nobody has taught us but i think in our education system also people say mistake mat karo but i think by mistakes you you basically learn so galti karna hamara janm se adhikar hai lekin usko sudharte rehna hamara kartavya so basically it's a combination ki you can keep doing the mistakes but don't repeat the same mistake again again you have to keep improvising on it so uh, this is very important because a lot of time by fear of mistakes or fear of failure actually holds us from doing something and maybe the early on you are able to taste the failure or do the mistakes i think uh, later on you'll be seeing the more success out of it this is one i think it has helped me in terms of building the courage and trying to do what i want to do irrespective of what others are saying because most of the things as of now i'm doing in my social this thing one is working with the government schools ict labs another is trying to create software and the solutions which works for without internet and without power for both the things i have many of my smart entrepreneurs friends who are very successful saying that you know you're wasting your time uh, because these are not the right problems to work on but then i think you know the time has tested and you know i think you know i've been able to come out uh, second point was first language is art and second language is skill this is one of my firm belief and i think i wish we were able we are able to help ourselves and other people uh, with this fact that so one of the reason today i can speak to you a, a little confidently in the language of uh, english irrespective of my first language is actually hindi more comfortable in hindi more expressive in hindi but today i am able to do a lot better with this language because my first language hindi i was actually good at that particular art i was not weak and you will realize that people who are not good at their first language itself and which happens a lot and i can see my kids are also victim in that that our schools are not even teaching the first language well just straight away jumping into the second language and i think that's a you know the few people are able to sail through that but my personal take is i think we should never compromise so when we work with communication skills when we talk about i want to improve a communication skill or you want to improve communication skills i think it's not about language english it's more about the your first language and what you can do with that can you express yourself well can you be creatively comprehend and number of you know this thing can you actually articulate things well in your first language because if you can do that well second language is skill because i have seen it other than english i have learned spanish and there was a 63 hour kind of course and once you are into a little bit of practice you are actually comfortable with that language so which means ki first language if you master as an art you can always learn second skills which could be english chinese japanese korean german whatever it could be uh, so this is what my kind of this thing is the marks the third point is basically i think i have emphasized in one of my incidents marks gives you the landing opportunity but personality gives you the wing and that's what i have realized that when i started working on the personality i was able to do much better in my kind of you know the personal growth as well as you know the career growth your role model is around you emulate with someone you can relate with better that's a very simple thing because you know there's a lot of gyan around it and if we can then agar gyan se sab sudhar jate to hum log sab bahut acche ho jate hain so we have to really walk through small small steps to reach to the kind of you know the bigger length uh you can learn something good from everyone that's what another thing is so i think when you are traveling with let's say rickshaw driver or in the train or uh, in the cafe you are meeting some people there is always something to talk about to each other so never shy away talk to the people make them comfortable let them talk to you about their own experiences and i'm sure we have something good to learn every possible person starting from a sweeper in our college to i was the you know the director in the college everybody has a story of heroism i think you know we should respect them that's what probably i have realized that everyone has something to kind of you know this thing so it's not a privileged thing that you know only some people have the, the heroism but i think everybody is a hero for somebody else so try to learn from everyone invest early and let it grow and i think this is coming from one very interesting saying i learned from my uncle who was you know is no more but he was related to politics and one thing he said is ki 
रिश्तों का पौधा जल्दी से जल्दी लगाते चलो सो वॉट यू सो आई थिंक यू नो वट द कनेक्शन विच वी हैव इट इफ लेट्स इफ आई मीट टूडे एंड यू नो बट जेनुअली कनेक्ट विद यू it's it's a seedling of that particular tree of relationship even after 5 years when we meet you'll see that we will not be meeting as if we are meeting second time but there is a the, the growth of relationship which happens because people change people grow you know so the, the someone who is who was a very junior or who was student at some point is maybe a district collectors you know and then they, we are able to kind of enjoy the relationship fruit of the relationship much better so i think building relationship early on is much better and you will see automatically that keeps growing so it's interesting thing and the last one very interesting thing which i usually use bina mare swarg nahi milta which means ki baatein bahut hai but jab bhi aapko kuch achieve karna hota hai you want to achieve something in your life you have to make sure you have to do it you can't just simulate in mind it's it's basically you have to uh, walk the talk so uh, to achieve something you have to really go through something and so there is a very simple keyword saying bina mare swarg nahi milta is uh, i use it a lot uh i can just these are some of the references i'm pretty much towards the end there's a lot i could have talked i don't know you know how fairly i have been able to talk to you guys because it was very fragmented you know the one story for uh, a one experience could have been good enough for one hour but then i've just tried to see if i can just put bits and pieces which you can connect on your own um you can find a lot about us uh, i have the reference and this is a small video i thought i'll share with you before the q and a but uh, what i can do is i can just post the links in the groups this thing and maybe given we have reached to the 10 o'clock so we can use next few minutes for q and a uh, so jitendra you decide whether we want to watch this small video or we can just straight away go to the q and a yeah so uh, so there must be some class right now okay mm-hmm. like, uh, 10 o'clock uh, yeah so i think uh, Uh, it's been most of students have left because of that yeah mm-hmm. so so i think uh, uh, we can provide the link that will be probably better mm-hmm. and uh, let the students uh, watch it around yeah so this is the because the they have the class actually so if you see yeah, yeah i can understand <laughs> if you see some of them right now. but we can uh, invite questions if uh, any like although we have three students only uh, mm-hmm. uh, so if they have any question they can ask So, any question, students? So, since there is no question, <laughs> so this is mostly yeah. because of the class. Actually, they have the class right now. So. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, thank you very much, Arvind. Uh, it was a wonderful talk. Uh, so, so basically, the uh, thing uh, is, uh, in order to uh, like South Society, there are many. at uh, many levels we have to work as uh, one level uh, we have to start with our own uh, basically identity itself that we have to uh, work on like uh, we do have like uh, some uh, peer pressures and based on that uh, i think what uh, arvin wanted to convey is uh, not get lost in that you have to get out of it so that is the first barrier we have to break so if you are just stuck or uh, not uh, Uh, you know i'm not uh, good at english and all kind of things uh, then we will not be able to serve the society so first you break that barrier then second is the skill itself uh, whatever a skill we have we can always make use of it to serve society so that's uh, making uh, those skills important and then then third is think about doing something for the society and for that you need the will power and uh, there are a lot of things at least the education and health uh, uh, from arvin stock at least we get two things that are very much required uh, basically there are a lot of scope there yeah so there are the talk was at several levels yeah and uh, surely the students will uh, benefit because of it. so thank you very much uh, arvin uh, yeah, yeah so dr kamal anything yeah thank you arvin ji sorry in the beginning i couldn't talk much and i was not audible so thank thanks you so much personally i felt that i learned a lot from this talk and there is uh, many thing that uh, we can communicate to the students because you people are examples if i can say so that they can learn a lot from the what you have said and also from what you have done 
So my request will be like, you know, that this, as you know, this was a class where we are inviting people. And thanks to Jitendji also, I should thank him also that he introduced me to you and also from other colleagues he have introduced me. So that is great to learn from you people. And But I would like to request you to visit sometime to us so that, you know, students can interact with you in person more and maybe talk like that. Because this is a class setup and by 50 this ends and then they have to go to other class. So I think that is sometime restrictions. So if you visit in person and now hopefully uh, we'll be in a safe to travel and pandemic at least looks a bit relaxed, but we don't know. We are hearing some bad news from some corners. I don't know. But so I think I'll be really happy or we'll be really happy if you plan to visit sometime IT Roper and we can have interaction session with students and also with our colleagues, because I think not only students, but many of our colleagues will also learn things from you. So, so thank you so much. And I really look forward to interacting with you. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. I think I would love to stop by whenever I'm traveling that side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll just yeah. make sure that, you know, I plan mm -hmm. some time to come and at least meet you guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, I would say that given, you know, th th there's a limited time and, you know, I think I must have overstepped a little bit also. But no, I hope no, this is perfectly I, fine. This was this was this was very good. Uh, there, there's nothing to think like that on that. Yeah. Yeah. This is a real story that uh, yeah. I think students will benefit. That's the main thing, basically. Yeah. That's uh, uh, I I I would say that was the that like the way we say, no? don't uh, throw baby out of the bath water, right? So <laughs> so this is like uh, if you had not covered those, it will be like throwing yeah. basically. So, uh -huh. Yeah, and in, to, in today's time, in today's time, see what uh, we also tell in the class and because in the last two years, like we have been going in the online mode completely. So mm -hmm. when we are teaching also particularly other topics, then I tell to students, you know, like I can even give you a better video on these topics for, uh, from other institutions, mm -hmm. other professors, you know. But mm -hmm. what happens in the class, what you learn from interactions, talking and yeah, so, so this, I at least, so I think this is something because see some topics, certain things then people can learn like you know they can just get video like that then then the role of human being is left out completely i see today's time you can get resources so i think uh, these kind of things are there where they can really learn a lot at least personally the way i believe that that is how it should be otherwise class learning is you know now everything is online so you don't need you just need a person who can run video for the students and that is done so i think <laughs> so no, i think hopefully if if we get another kind of opportunity in future Sure, sure. Sure. No, no, I will. I will talk to Jitendji, and I think we are not like uh, this. Is, this is not for you. This will be an opportunity for us. Let me tell you. <laughs> you no, I think that's what yeah. I said. Next time, now, now I think it will be like Q and A only. Let's talk mm. about it. Okay, that yeah. interaction part is very important. That's mm. what I think. And yes. also, I said I'm not really used to doing these kind of things. Mm. I can talk passionately for a lot longer hours, you know, without the boundaries of knowing what where the clock is going. So. Uh, I think for me, this is also something which I'll get used to a bit, uh, yeah. you know, slowly, slowly. So mm -hmm. uh, once again, I think thank you for providing me this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks, Jitendra, for connecting back. I think sure. I'm a little more richer introducing Kamalji now. So yeah. I think one of the biggest wealth which I've been building is the, the wealth of relationship. And uh, oh, that's important, yes. Thank and trust you. me, it pays you well. <laughs> it pays you well, <laughs> you know. So one of my some of my best or most paying projects are the one where I've done maybe a year year ago or two years ago a pro bono work for somebody to help genuinely someone without any incentives and they have been become the engine of kind of change. So I think it's it's that the quality always sells and I think the yeah. relationship always grows. So let's hope our seed of relationship started a little bit today and it grows. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And look forward to talking to you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Same here. Okay. Bye. Okay. Uh, Bye. Thanks. Uh, thanks again, Arvind. And uh, I have copied the link you that you shared, and I will share with the students. Okay. So they yeah, will. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Because thank you again, and uh, th thank you also, Kamalji. And uh, uh, and uh, Arvind, we will connect later on. So whenever you are going uh, pa passing through uh, this area, please let me know, and then we can have. Uh, sure. You know, so. Right. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.